Thank you. What? He's on the phone with me right now? Hey, contestants, how you doing? Glad you could be here. How many people do we have playing today? So you're playing with yourself, huh? please. Sorry, just type your name in, okay? straw for that. Hey, okay, everybody, everybody, okay, I don't want you to get too... Oh, yeah. Are you looking for a seven-question tournament-length game or a full 21-question deal? But I know that they're famous. All right, if that's what you want, your call. If you want to buzz in, hit the letter B. B is in bubble wrap. God, I love that bubble wrap. Come in here. Can I get a sandwich? What happened to the Chiron? Load it up now! 20 seconds. 20 seconds, oh shit. Uh, okay, when you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices or you're gonna lose cash, alright? Just find me after the show. Okay, let's lose a desktop, please. Okay, and go to black. Okay, guy, okay? Alright, stand by. Here we go. Refreshing. Shut up! Tuffies, where real people eat. Sports Geek, welcome to the show. Okay, you ready to race? Let's do it. Okie doke, give me a category. We're number one! Hey. We're number one! All right, let's see what we're doing here. Baseball teams that meet for breakfast. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. Ready? Say writer-director John Hughes makes a Major League Baseball version of his hit movie, The Breakfast Club. This new Breakfast Club features Major League teams as characters. Based on each team's performance in 1991, the Braves and Twins could both play which character? The uncoordinated nerd, the lowly outcast turned winner, the guy who's always suspended, or the consistent star jock? The 1991 World Series pitted the Braves against the Twins, both of whom had had last place standings the year before. <laughs> But they turned it around, and now they can get into the college of their choice. Category time, what's it gonna be? We got spirit, yes we do! We got spirit, how about two? The category is... A corsage and a bowl. One thousand bucks for a right answer. Okay, coming at ya, heads up! If Martha Stewart were to design a corsage using only the colors found in the names of college bowl games, which of these colors would be missing? Orange, peach, copper, or aqua? There is no aqua bowl. Aqua bowl sounds like a toilet deodorizer. Martha may disagree, but I don't think those things would make good corsages. Woo. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Threes. That's gotta hurt. Three. The category behind this question is Whirling Divas. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Hey, remember the opening scene of The Sound of Music when Julie Andrews is twirling happily on top of a mountain? In modern health club lingo, if Julie were spinning on top of a mountain today, what would she be doing? Doing an aerobic dance, riding a stationary bicycle, twirling free weights, or rolling in the grass? She'd be riding a stationary bicycle. <laughs> At least you better hope it remains stationary. Oh no! It's moving! How about it? Hit me with the category. Score! Number four! Here's the category. S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y Fight. Okay, this isn't gonna be easy, but you're looking at $3,000. So, you feeling anxious? Me too. Let's go. If the Bay City Rollers were both a band and a roller derby team, which of these songs about scoring would appear on its album Rock and Roller Derby Love Letter? Ecstasy when you jam it to me, heart like a wedge, roll over and feel my love, or I spiked my love punch. Can you taste it? <laughs> Jamming in roller derby is scoring. <laughs> Hello, Michigan. We're the Bay City Rollers, and we're going to keep the crap out of these guys. Okay, pick a category. The corner pocket, number five. 
The category is, please judge, just one more chance, and we'll pay out $3,000 for this one. Say troubled figure skater Tanya Harding has decided to take up synchronized swimming. Ten seconds into her first synchronized swimming competition, Tanya messes up on one of her moves and asks the judges if she can do it over again. What happens? She gets disqualified, she gets penalized two points, she can start over but will get no points, or she can start over but loses ten seconds. See ya! Let's see what a good player would have answered. A competitor who stops voluntarily and has to do a figure again gets penalized two points. Fortunately for her, there are no broken skate laces in synchronized swimming to worry about. Okie dokel, give me a category. Uh-oh, test cuss tits dime store. It's time for a ticklish test go. This gibberish questions category is bad advice for stand-up comics. Opening value, $5,000. All right, to solve this puzzle, you got to think fast, because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. Okay, tell me, with what bit of coaching advice does this rhyme? Make a small poo the last bit. Okay, let's see if you know it. Start typing and hit return when you're done. Uh. <laughs> hey, Johnson, be aggressive. Make a small poo the last bit. So, what's his next piece of handy advice? Throw the ball into the basket? Category time, what's it gonna be? Under the rim with question seven. And this category is the dark side of hockey. Okay, swing this one and I'll give you 2,000 bucks. Okay, listen, let's say that in the director's cut of Star Wars, the Rebellion and the Empire decide to settle their differences in a hockey game. Of course, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker immediately throw down. Because Vader started the fight, he gets a game misconduct. However, the ref also slaps a minor on him. Which of these could be the reason? Vader's bigger than Luke, Luke's a goalie, Vader's wearing a face shield, or Luke's wearing white? According to the rules of the NHL, if a player who's wearing a face shield instigates a fight, he'll be assessed an extra minor penalty. <laughs> and switching over to the dark side of the force carries a three-game suspension. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Two, four, six, eight. Question eight is jailbait. Go eight. This one's gonna be throw down your gloves and cook. Right here, 1,000 bucks for a right answer. Okay, let's assume for a minute that minute rice only takes one minute to cook. At one minute per batch, how many batches of minute rice could a hockey player make while in the penalty box for fighting? Two, five, 10, or 15? Fighting is a major penalty and therefore costs you five in the box. Mmm, but those five minutes never tasted so good. Okie doke, give me a category. Runners, take your mark. Set nine. Whoops. And the category is giving someone the ring finger. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. All right, get yourself set, it's time. Suppose you've been a member of every New York Yankees team that's won a World Series. Assuming it's 1995, how many fingers will you need to wear all your championship rings? 1, 10, 15, or 22? 22 championships. And with 22 fingers, you can probably throw one hell of a curveball. Okay, pick a category. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10! And the category is short order cooks that aren't at all short. Okay, shouldn't be too tough. This question's going to be worth a grand. All right, let's get this ball rolling. Say the local diner is run by confused ex-jocks. If you order the sausage gravy and biscuits breakfast, what piece of sporting equipment might you find on your plate? Hockey pucks, a baseball bat, a discus, or relay batons? In the world of hockey, biscuit is slang for hockey puck. <laughs> No wonder all those hockey players are missing teeth. All right, that's one round down. Now don't get distracted by the round car girl because we're off to round two. <laughs> okay, listen up. In round two, everything's worth double. You understand what double means? Times two? 
Okay, let's go. How about it? Hit me with a category. Eleven. The name of this category is... For my next trick, it's going to be worth $4,000. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. Let's say former Chicago Blackhawk Bill Mosienko is turning as a magician performing a hat trick. If his act were similar to his record-breaking hat trick, what would be unique about it? He'd perform it shorthanded, he'd finish it from the far end of the rink, he would perform it in less than a minute, or he would perform it without a stick. Bill Mosienko scored his record-breaking hat trick in 21 seconds. <laughs> I'll bet you a puffy shirt David Copperfield doesn't score that frequently. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Uh-oh, West Truck licks nine more. Once again, it's time for a Flicker is the Stone. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. Dogs, dogs, dogs! Opening value for this gibberish question is 10,000 beans. Now you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'll be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. All right, check this out and tell me with what famous quote does this rhyme? Kit paint rover. Bill spits clover. Ooh, you think you got it. Okay, start typing and hit return when you're finished. Way to go, Yogi. Category time. What's it gonna be? The thrill of victory, the agony of 13. The category? Things your older brother told you. $6,000 is riding on this one. Your older brother has just told you to go pick him up a couple of flying condoms so he and his girlfriend can participate in their favorite leisure activity. You go to the local sex shop and ask for some flying condoms. After the clerk chuckles, where does he send you? To the fishing tackle shop up the street, to the bike shop down the street, to the sex shop in the next town, or to the gun shop around the corner? The fishing tackle shop up the street is your best bet to find this fishing lure. <laughs> Which is not to discourage you from walking into a sex shop anyway. You know, to, to look around. I do it. Okie dokie, give me a category. Come on, ref, who's falling? 14! 14! <coughs> Sit down! Here's your category. Beats the hell out of color commentary. And this one's 4,000 bucks for a right answer. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. Athlete Johnny Weissmuller went on to star in several Tarzan movies. Based on his athletic career, what would Weissmuller's Tarzan most likely say? Tarzan lift, cheetah spirits, ouch, Tarzan punt, coconuts, Tarzan swim, impress Jane, or Tarzan find for steroid use. Johnny Weissmuller was an Olympic swimmer. <laughs> he spent his retirement hanging out with Maureen O'Sullivan in a loincloth. I'll take that action over a Nike commercial any day. Okay, pick a category. It's question 15, it's question 15. <laughs> All right, let's see what we're doing here. Who are you calling a chicken? And I'll pay you $4,000 if you get this one right. Hang on tight, here we go. Which one of these chickeny names is not an actual nickname of a college team? The Gamecocks, the Chanticleers, the Blue Hens, or the Running Roosters? There is no college team called the Running Roosters. <laughs> Which is really a shame, because it'd be so easy to get them up for morning workouts. <laughs> All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. The category is I predict. And this one is not going to be easy. $6,000. All right, help me out here. I don't know if you can remember this, but I sure can't. You know, he was really good at predicting the outcomes of college basketball games. In 1988, he correctly predicted 88% of the NCAA tournament winners, and he couldn't even speak English. Who was he? Jimmy the Greek, Ted the Rooster, Chester the Cheetah, or the Italian Stallion? Ted the Rooster predicted winners by pecking at kernels of corn placed in front of different teams' names. Sadly, Ted passed away in 1994. He was a nice rooster, but he could be a little cocky. Wow, that was a good one. How about it? Hit me with the category. Nine plus eight, ten plus seven. And this category is... Hey, 
That guy stole my name, and this one's going to be worth $2,000. Ready on the trigger? Pull. Which of the following wrestlers would NHL great Jacques Plante have to face in a steel cage match for sole rights to his nickname? Jake the Snake, Gorilla Monsoon, Andre the Giant, or Doink the Clown? Montreal Canadiens netminder Jacques Plante, or Jake the Snake, got his nickname because he's the first goalie to regularly come out of the crease to intercept passes and shots. <laughs> Wait, and the other Jake the Snake got his name Y? Oh, he carried a big snake. Oh. Okay, pick a category. 18. The category is Important Lessons from a Furry Blue Guy. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Ready? Imagine this episode of Sesame Street. In today's lesson, Grover wants to demonstrate the concepts of inside and outside using college football's famed Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside. To what school must he travel? UMass, Syracuse, Nebraska, or Army? <laughs> Running backs Glenn Davis, who usually ran outside, and Doc Blanchard, who went up the middle, played football for Army in the mid-40s. <laughs> And next week, Grover will introduce us to Mr. Outhouse. Okie doke, well, give me a category. 19 here, get your ice cold 19. The category behind this question is, ooh, that smell. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4,000 bucks. <laughs> Woo, what the hell is that? Oh, it's a little celebrity trash. Hey, let's see what we got. We've got fragments from an exploding scoreboard, a St. Louis Browns cap, some old disco albums, and a few vines from Wrigley Field. Whose stuff is this? George Steinbrenner, Bill Veck, Al Spaulding, or Leo DeRocher? No, I think all we find in George's trash is lots and lots of hate mail. You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. He used to run the Browns, had disco demolition night, and used all that other great trash to get folks in the seats. Hey, anyone that torches disco records is okay by me. Category time, what's it gonna be? 20. Here's the category. Let's start with a loose-fitting, comfy shirt. You get this toffee, and I'll give you $6,000. Let's say the theme at this year's spring fashion shows in Milan is hunting, with a particular bent toward turkey hunting. If turkey hunter chic became the overnight rage at Milan, what would we see Sharon Stone, Demi Moore, and Uma Thurman wearing the next day? Night vision goggles, hats with fake turkey heads fixed to them, full camouflage from head to toe, or green shirts and black pants? Oh, how awful. And I suppose they'll be wearing brown belts with those pants? Ooh. <laughs> Too bad you didn't pick this. You need full camouflage from head to toe to hunt turkey. They have excellent eyesight and can detect the slightest change in their environment. But if Sharon and Demi and Uma were walking around in full camouflage, then who would know it was them? Oh, no! <laughs> All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. is upon you. And so you've done the attack before. No problem. Here's your clue. But our fans call us. Hey, do you have any fans? Doubtful. Let's see how you do. Player, when I 
think of you, I think of superlatives like great, amazing, fabulous, sports trivia geek with no social life, stuff like that. But don't thank me, because the real truth is... You don't know Jack! Okay, uh, great show, everybody. Great show. Um, cue the commercials, please. Thank you. And Cookie, um, can you give me, uh... Can you give me some information about these contestants? What's going on? Uh, listen, excuse me. Uh, whenever you feel like playing again, you just gotta let me know, all right? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Live at the Power Dome. Celebrity slap fight. <laughs> the biggest female stars square off in a face slapping showdown. Shut up, you bitch! You shut up! Oh, shut Don't up! miss the world title match between that girl who played the prostitute on Kojak and that girl who took her blouse off in Meatballs 4. The biggest celebrity, the biggest fight. You can't sit down because if you're on your seat, these girls will get you off. Hi, honey. Come over here. Come over here? Was that a crack? You know I am sensitive about my male pattern baldness. You won't be for long. I just bought the new plug on matic hair and applique rivet gun. Hold still. Ow! Ow! Wow, I look fantastic. See? With the plug on matic hair and applique rivet gun, you just rip the hair follicles off your back and then plant them in your scalp. I look chic. Do not stop now. I won't. And you won't either. With the plug on matic hair and applique rivet gun. Also available, snip a matic home spay and neutering clamp. Dick Weber. Mark Raw. Earl Anthony. Ron Palombi Jr. You've watched them burn up the lanes for years. Now you can watch the pins fly in your own home. Pro Bowling Videos presents Rolling Balls of Fire. Watch Earl Anthony pick off the impossible 4, 6, 7, 10 double pinnacle. See Mark Roth bring home the cash with the 1, 2, 10 watch out spare. And you won't believe your eyes when Ron Palombi Jr. completes the death defying 2, 4, 5, 8 bucket. The bucket. You'll see hour after hour of the nastiest, the dirtiest, the hardest stopping his game in sports. Bowling! Order now and receive absolutely free the same Brunswick 357X finger hole inserts used by the pros. Send check or money order to Rolling Balls of Fire, 848 West Eastman, Suite 203, Chicago, Illinois, 60622. Allow six to eight weeks for delivery. Order today. Parents, is your daughter living up to her full endorsement potential? If you just said no, it's time to consider Igor Garoli's gymnastics boot camp. Igor teaches discipline. What are you eating? Just an apple. No more food until you are back down to 75 pounds, you fat cow. Ouch! Igor teaches courage. Igor, I broke my ankle. Walk it off, cry baby. And most of all, Igor teaches love. You won the gold, I'm so proud. Igor, I want a silver. Get away from me. And on Igor's training regimen, there's no need to worry about those pesky menstrual periods. Igor's girls say girls forever. What are those, breasts? Get it out! I'm developing. Get out! Igor Garoli's Gymnastics Boot Camp. It'll be the best $30,000 a year you ever spent. Call now! You and your friends have just played a hard game of hoops, and now you're ready to chill out. Well, there's nothing that goes down cooler than an ice-cold NBA draft. Good game. Toss me a bottle of Juwan Howard. Mmm. <sighs> If he plays as good as he tastes, he's worth every cent. When you want the real taste of the NBA and its players, you need a beer that's brewed with sports fans like you in mind. We use only the finest Michigan malt, Colorado hops, and Charles Farley, and then combine them in a brewing process we call ice dribbling. Ice dribbling. Capturing the essence of your favorite players. Here you go. Try a cold, wet Shaq O'Neal. Damn, that's one good beer. That's one good basketball player. Try our new imported beers, Deadlift Light, Kukoc Cream Ale, and Flade Divac Honey Vice. NBA Draft with the smooth, creamy taste of your favorite athletes. Slam dunk a frosty one today. The makers of NBA Draft wish to remind you never to drink and drive down the lane.